E360 TV proudly presents Messages of Inspirational Stories TV show. Live streaming now to millions of devices around the world on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live Streaming. Our shows are available video on demand on these channels. And we broadcast daily Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on these channels. On Mondays, Expanding Your Business. Tuesdays, Finding Health Naturally. Wednesdays, Mentoring Our Youth. Thursdays, Pets We Love. And on Fridays, Women in Leadership. Brought to you by our producers and hosts, Jim Grant and Donna Guimwa. Along with our host, Bieta Severin Reed and Emerson Brantley. Supported by our admin team of Michaela Vidal and Gaia Guinoa Balcone Leda. And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspirational Stories is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the 6 If you struggle trying to get your message across to your ideal client, please go to 6 and apply for a, a, free, a free course they're going to be putting on. Coming up real soon. 6minutewebinar.com. You will see the 6minutewebinar.com uh, in the marquee a little later. We're also joined by our good friend, Mr. Bill Heinrich, the seven levels of truth. Mr. Bill took 30 years in this. And it's all about how you can overcome your fears, your anxiety, all the things that trouble you. He teaches you how to let it go and focus on loving yourself first so that you can enjoy the rich life that you are so entitled to. It's your, it's your birthright to enjoy peace, love, joy, and harmony in your life. And I highly recommend Mr. Bill's book. He's a personal friend of mine. And we're so honored today. In fact, usually uh, today we normally talk about expanding your business, but now I'm going to be put in a hot seat, <laughs> which is a good thing. I'm going to be asked some questions and I'm going to be interviewed by Mike Lewis and Emerson Brantley. And let me invite these gentlemen to the show. And let me invite Mr. Mike up here first. And Emerson, how are you today, sir? Hi, Jim. Hi. Good to see you. Good to Good see, to you, see you. And Mike, uh, we're so honored to have you here. You've been on the show before, but you'd be kind enough just to take a few moments and share a little bit about who you are. I sure will. Uh, I'm a uh, publisher, and uh, what I do is I publish books for businesses, uh, executives that uh, want to make a difference in the world. We do it through uh, interviewing them to get all their information, then we create the books, publish them, make them a bestseller, mm -hmm. and show them how to use the books to further their business. Uh, I would say that uh, a year ago, I would have said books are the most powerful way to get your message out there. Uh, nowadays, we're running neck and neck with podcasting and TV shows. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, not everybody is always online like we feel we are. So books work both on and offline. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually kind of flipped the table and went to Emerson and Jim and asked, uh, you know, Jim does a wonderful job interviewing people. I'd like to interview him and create a short book for people about mm -hmm. the wealth of podcast information that Jim has. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim was fortunate enough to say yes. So I'm going to be gentle with him. I promise, Jim. <laughs> but, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mike's website is right there on the marquee. Ideasworthknowing.com. Please visit that ideasworthknowing.com. And Emerson, how are you today, sir? I'm doing well, thank you, Jim. And I'm thank happy you. to be here with two, uh, two people that I've known for a number of years and trust mm -hmm. and enjoy working with. 
Well, the honor is all ours. And ladies and gentlemen, women, uh, Emerson's website is web3direct.com. You see it on the marquee there. Emerson is also, and we're very honored to have a man of Emerson's quality and also Mike here with us. But Emerson is also, he is a board member with the U.S. Uh, Green Chamber of Commerce. And we're very honored about that. But uh, we want to get right into me being on the hot seat because I don't <laughs> know what's going to be asked. And I hope I don't embarrass myself for generations to come, you know. <laughs> well, as as we all know, a good podcast host tries his very best to present the guest in the best light possible. Yes. Uh, for two reasons. He, he wants to to help that person he's interviewing but also he wants as good a quality content as possible mm -hmm. to, to get his people to continue to come back. And that's one thing Jim has done a great job on. Uh, Jim, uh, approximately how many viewers a month do you have of your shows? Just on the E360 TV network, we get about 1.5 million impressions for our five you know shows a week. And uh, that's very impressive. We're very honored about that. And I, I, I want to tell people how impressive it is. The average podcast, uh, if they're lucky, gets about 40 downloads a week. Mm -hmm. So they get an audience of about 40 people. Mm -hmm. So there's a substantial difference between someone that can get millions of people to watch and someone that can get 40 people to watch. And that's mm -hmm. the reason, folks, why I want a book by Jim about podcasting is because he's he's figured it out. Uh, if you told him what all what the asked him what the one magic ingredient was, though, I know for a fact he couldn't answer that because there's so <laughs> much involved. So why yes. don't you just start briefly, Jim, with how you got uh, you know what your uh, about your broadcast background before you created this mm -hmm. TV and podcast network, and then we'll roll into what you're doing now. Okay. I was in radio for many years, and I have a, a podcast there on Toganet Radio. And during the pandemic 2020, a group of us got together and, and they said, hey, we need to put on some positive messages. We know a lot of speakers. And so in the group, this person said, I can do this, this person can do that. And, you know, then Don McGrath, one of the gentlemen there, one of my great friends, he says, Jim. I said, yeah. He says, you can host it. So, okay. <laughs> so we broadcast five days a week on Zoom and Facebook Live, interviewing people that had positive messages. And this is something very important. Always follow the energy. Little did I know that that little freebie that we were doing five days a week of, you know, sharing information with others we didn't realize we were investing in ourselves because we got invited to join the E360 TV network. And we broadcast on Roku. You saw the channels that were on. And that's one of the things in life. When you focus on being a good servant with, a, with the right heart, with the right amount of love for others, doors will open for you without you even ringing the doorbell. That's how it all began. You know, Mike, I, I just want to interject here. E360 TV, for those who may not be familiar with it, it's the same TV station that the NFL Players Association chose mm -hmm. as their preferred vendor for broadcast network network uh, mm -hmm. online for all of their members. That's 14,000 members, I think, Jim? Yeah, last, we, last I heard was about 14,000 members. Yeah. So Jim, okay. Jim show being invited onto that was a that really was a big deal. Yes, I uh, I think because there's so many small podcasts out there, a lot of people don't realize what a big deal it is, mm -hmm. and also how much work, uh, of course, Jim and you too, and all of his production people go through to get the very best guests that they can mm -hmm. for the shows, because that's it's a lot of work producing that many shows. Anybody. Yeah. who's done it will appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm brand new, Jim, and I just want to do a podcast because I heard they were something to do. What? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing I should do? The very first thing you should do is to design what your show is going to be about. What is your content? 
Your show should be a direct reflection of who you are. Because people are going to connect with you. Your audience is going to be a true reflection of your personality. And you got to be able to understand that the show is not about you. It's all about the content, the guests, what I call infotainment. Because we provide information, but we also provide a little humor along the way, too. And the best example that I can use is like America's Got Talent TV show. People tune into that show weekly. Millions of people do. And they watch it for one reason. They know who the panel is going to be, the judges, but they tune in to see the entertainment. Who's going to be singing, who's going to be doing magic acts, whatever it might be. That's the drawing card for them. So your content <clears throat> is what will draw audience to you. You're just a messenger. That's it. Okay. Uh, some of us have 50 years of business experience, and, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why you can see a person like yourself that can host several different types of podcasts because you've got 50 years of experience, you know, <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, you know, it, it's great to have that 22 year old superstar on, but. You know, it's also great to have somebody on that's that's seen things don't always go up and they don't oh, ever yeah. stay stay all the way down. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that to me is one of the you know, I, I actually go out and interview people and search them online before I decide to go on a podcast. I oh, don't yeah. accept I don't accept every podcast invitation. I do my due diligence, too. And people are going to mm -hmm. do that for the people that want to start the podcast. So they need to be mm -hmm. cognizant that everything needs to be congruent. That's mm -hmm. why you said that uh, it had to be something that, that they had knowledge and belief in. Uh, yes. Something that was a reflection of them because mm -hmm. people will spot incongruency or, mm -hmm. uh, or call it fakiness, or mm -hmm. I guess that's not a word. Yeah. I, I, with Emerson writing my... Uh, <laughs> copy for all of my companies. Uh, I've, I don't have to be as careful with the English language because <laughs> he, he looks at every word when he's writing it for me. Thank God. <laughs> uh, and I saw you've got some production people too that free up your yeah. time. And, yes. uh, but you didn't always have those. When you started no. out, uh, you know, uh, well, <laughs> the, first, the first question, and you answered it uh, so well when we talked the, before, uh, how do you help people get over imposter syndrome that have never been on a podcast before and they're, they're scared? Oh yeah. Around? Well, I also, I go into a little bit of background about myself. A lot of people do not realize that I suffer from glossophobia and that's the fear of public speaking. And my life changed when I was in the military, I had to become a certified instructor <laughs> and I was forced to deal with it. But the things that I share with people who come on as a guest and they're nervous, it's just, you know, just take a deep breath and relax. I'm going to record the show. We can edit out anything that, you know, it, we need to add out that you would not, that you would not be embarrassed about. But most importantly, you and I are going to have a one-on-one heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And all you're going to do to be able to see me is look at that little camera light. That's that simple, relax, because come from the heart. People want to hear the content of why you're there. And that's the best advice I give. And, and generally, just by being on the show with me, just my personality, I'm able to give them a very relaxed feeling. And I've had people thank me. Gee, that was fun. I mean, I was scared to death coming in there, but you made it fun. And that's what it's all about. That's why we call it infotainment. People tune in for the information. You're just yeah, a voice yeah. messenger. Yes, sir. A, a good example, Mike. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had a young man on there that um, that I invited, <laughs> um, Connor Hebert. And he is 17. He has his own business uh, with... Uh, uh, microgreens and uh, his family is real supportive, but he had real some anxieties about 
being on the show would it be good enough you know would, would he mess up and and he sat down with Jim and they talked uh briefly and when he got on the show the first thing he said to me when he got off was that was fun it felt like mm -hmm. I was we were just in his living room talking yeah mm -hmm. and and that's that's a that's that's a testament to the yeah. process that Jim is talking about. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of us have seen shows or, or listened to podcasts where it, it, there was just something awkward about it. Yeah. And yeah. that's, 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 a, that's, that's an issue. We pick it up. We don't, we don't even know what it is, but Jim mm -hmm. and, uh, and Donna and the others, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, they make it feel like you're, you're sitting in the living room and just talking. Mm -hmm. I I think that is definitely a prerequisite if you want to be a successful host. Yes. Is, you know, you not only have to care for the people, but you also, and this is a really hard one for me, as people will see as we go on, <laughs> you have to shut up and listen once in a while, too, as a host. <laughs> and uh, it, it, when it's on a topic that you yeah. dearly love, that's not so easy to do, is it, Jim? Oh. Oh, you just brought up a great, uh, great comment there. It just really flash thumping. And this illustrates what I'm going to say. We do not script a show. Mm -hmm. We have bullet points. We have background material, sure, to keep the energy flowing. But a TV show like we're having right now is really a mini mastermind. And as Mike is talking about that, it flashed in my mind how, you know, we become inspired and we become, you know, there's ideas that come to us from the energy. Now, listen up, folks. Don't miss this. This is important. These ideas come to you for one specific reason. There may be one person out there in TV land that needs to hear that comment. That's why it comes to your mind. And that's the power of having a good, warm conversation, a friendly conversation, because it, it, like this little mini mastermind we're having here, it generates energy. Please make a note of that because that's very important. It's one of my favorite sayings of Jim's is follow that energy. Oh, yeah. 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 It's actually a much more successful saying than follow the money. Because <laughs> money is just a scorekeeper. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the successful people that I know, it's, it's very secondary to their mission. And uh, yes. I think that's, it was uh, a great speaker once told me, uh, he was a guy that had a habit of running back and forth across the stage for the first minute or two of every speech. <laughs> and it's because he suffered from the same thing you do, Jim, and a lot of us do. You know, studies show that people have more fear of public speaking than they have of dying. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. uh, this guy told me he memorized the first minute of every speech he ever did. And so that while he was running back and forth, he could say it uh, while the yeah. adrenaline burned off and he got settled in. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always thought that, you know, if, if Zig Ziglar had stage fright, it's okay for me to have stage fright too. <laughs> and uh, I really truly believe that the only people that, that aren't concerned about their performance when they get in front of an audience uh, either are going to talk about something they don't believe in mm -hmm. or they're psychopaths. <laughs> everybody oh, yeah. else, everybody else is concerned about what the world thinks of them. But oh yeah, as, as I've seen on your show time and time again, you make the people real comfortable, real fast, mm -hmm. and you lead them into their area of expertise. And mm -hmm. once Jim gets them talking about their area of expertise, the show just flows. And mm -hmm. uh, sure, the host gets in there and directs it, you know, when it's going away from where the audience wants, the host pulls it back. Uh, you know, he uh, throws in comments when the people get a little bit stuck. And what most people don't know is a good host has already got show notes written. It's not scripted, but he's mm -hmm. got eight or ten questions ready in case mm -hmm. the expert chokes. I mean, yeah. and so, you know, folks, if you want to see what your podcast is going to look like, watch Jim's podcast. That's what a good mm -hmm. one does. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, 
you may see people that are scared when they get on camera, but you never see people that are scared when they leave at the end of the show. Uh, it's just, you know, it's happened so many times. I, I can't imagine how many times you've seen that, Jim. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, with all of your TV and uh, podcast shows. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I've. I've decided I'm going to accept the invitation or I went out and found someone that would have me as a guest. Uh, as a guest, what would you suggest that, that I do to help make my performance better? Okay. The very first thing, as far as the mechanics are concerned, I want to make sure you got a good camera and good lighting. That's very important. Also, the top important thing is your audio because people will forgive a picture that's not perfect or a camera's not perfect but nobody will put up and listen to noise if you got static on there if you got echoes on there that's a no-go you stop right there and then when you like like mike said i sent out an inquiry you know list you know several bullet points you want to make give me you know six or seven questions i need to ask and between Looking at your bio, looking at your bullet points and the questions that you've told me to ask or you'd like for me to ask. I can. That's the A team. Hey, the A team's here. And that brings up a good point. When something like that happens on a podcast, Just sometimes I've, I've seen people fall apart. And Emerson and I, we were in Orlando. We saw a lady on stage and her slides didn't work. And this was her first time on stage. And honest to goodness, you know what she said? I don't need those slides. I'm better looking than them anyway. Make a joke out of it because people will understand things happen. People will understand things go wrong. Yes. And people will also relate to you because, hey, this guy's not perfect. He's just like me. Things go wrong in his life, you know, and make fun of it. Make a light humor of it. Because when I mispronounce words, I say I got a degree and I can mispronounce words correctly the very first time. It's quite a gift I've got. And sometimes during a broadcast, Emerson may have connection problems, for example. And I'll say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Emerson just had to go down to the ATM, and get some more quarters to put in the machine. We'll get that cleared up. and He'll be right back. And I drive right on. The show goes on. Make yes. light humor of it and let the show go on because that's why people are there. That's what I call it infotainment because you got to make a little humor in there too. Yeah, and so so many people think they need those crutches too. Uh, and don't get me wrong, a good PowerPoint presentation it can be really awesome. Oh yeah, but, uh, nothing worse for someone that's new than to read their screen. Oh yeah. That's uh, if you want to upset the audience, turn your back to them and read what's on your PowerPoint because you're, <laughs> you're doing two things. You're telling them you don't know shit about this topic or you'd have it all up here already. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think you guys were important enough to spend the time to learn this stuff before I got here. Mm -hmm. uh, neither one plays well with an audience. They don't. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, the you know stuff happens. I'm in my backup studio today. That's why you can see the little odd things on the sides in that. Uh, <laughs> because my when I turned the camera on on my other one, uh, it had decided it was taking the day off. Uh, <laughs> but I did because I've been in the business a little while. I do have a backup camera, and mm -hmm. the and guess what the reason is why I have a backup camera. It's because I've had to use it before. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes in the <laughs> middle of a webinar when you're trying to sell something. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, I like the, the fact that you really have your guests focus on their specialty. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we've sent you the information. Uh, now the day of the show is coming up. What, what does the person do now? What's, what's step two? or three or however. Okay. Stuff. When we get ready to record, they just simply click on the link. They come into the studio and I want to, you know, make sure the lighting and camera is good and the audio. That is the very first point. <clears throat> then I to kind of like go over a few things we're going to talk about because get that will help them relax because now they know they're going to be talking about the topics. And I may have a question or two about their biography their bio they sent me, I may ask them a question about when you told me to, when I asked this question here, exactly what that means, share some more information with me. 
because the more uh, informed you are as the host and the more questions you ask of your guest, the better the entire show will be. The host will be more informed. The guests will be more relaxed because now they know what to expect. Yeah, I, I think that's a great thing. And uh, it's also uh, something the audience expects. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You know, I, I don't want to be here on Business Monday and see somebody uh, knitting mittens for cats. You know, it's just <laughs> not, not what I need to know about. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it, we probably can't, uh, can't get by without mentioning chat GBT and the AI revolution that's happening oh, yeah. right now, uh, that's affecting all content creation, but they're, the the people that are good guests are what I call aggregators. They mm -hmm. they take everything that's going on today in their business, and that's what they talk about. So mm -hmm. you're not you're not getting information that they heard secondhand three years mm -hmm. ago. You know the guests you tend to get focus on real things that they're really doing. Like mm -hmm. I, I've met the young man with the micro greens. Great oh kid. yeah great kid i i mm -hmm. didn't realize he'd been on your show i'll watch it afterwards yeah. uh but uh he he is a little nervous at first but boy once you turn him loose talking about mm -hmm. microgreens and how to grow them and what they're good for and that uh he has no problem commanding the stage mm -hmm. when he's on his expertise and he is i mean he's He's under 18, and he's one of the top experts on microgreens, yes. particularly on helping young people to to get into that type of healthy lifestyle. And I, I'm sure you drew that out during the interview. Okay, I've, oh, I've yeah. shown up. I've given you the list. Uh, we're going to talk about my favorite thing. You've calmed me down and solved the uh, imposter syndrome that we all suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm ready to, to go on a podcast uh, with mm -hmm. just that little bit of information. Uh, but now mm -hmm. I want to go to the to the second half, and it's it's usually the half people are most interested in. Let's talk about the mechanics of how you establish. I mean, it, you didn't get on uh, E360 doing shows with your iPhone by yourself out in the parking lot no i mean no there, there was so tell us what led mm -hmm. to you being in such a dominant position in the podcast market well basically uh it, it all comes back to content that's really the thing but we, you know having a good camera and a good microphone that is very very important and your content must always be a true reflection of what your podcast is all about. It really got to be, you can't be like, if we're talking about expanding your business on Monday, I cannot have a mechanic on here explaining about the firing order and the engine of a car because people are going, wait a minute, I'm interested in business. I'm not interested because, you know, if you went out and cranked up your car, can you actually tell me? Which one of the firing pistons fired first? The firing order. Nobody can. And, and the point the point I want to make there is that you got to be able to keep con very consistent flow of the information. So when people tune in, there's no surprise. A classic example of what I'm saying, how many times have you seen an ad or got an email or something? You click on the link, you go to the web page, you go like, Am I at the right place? It's not congruent. That is a major, major hurdle. And that's one you need to be very careful about. And as far as me, 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 the mechanical things, like I say, a good camera and a good microphone with the the way the Internet and the, you know, the virtual world is expanded exponentially. Mm -hmm. This is easy peasy. That should not be any type of showstopper or anything like that, because you can do great content with just a, a laptop and a camera and a microphone or either a headset with a mic. Mm -hmm. Don't ever use speakers on a, on a laptop. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Only you once. Only once. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that will, that will snake bite you. And remember, people will not listen to noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, you certainly see it happen, too, when people have their uh, assistant 
helping him with the podcast and they oh, both yeah. have their computers open in the same room. Oh, uh, yeah. That, yeah, you only you know, do that once. Yeah. You know, uh, some of this, some of the questions, uh, and Jim, I, I'll let you address this part of it. But, okay. Uh, Jim's mentioned, uh, and at the beginning of the show, he mentions each each of the different days. You didn't always do it that way, Jim. No. I mean, that was no. something that, uh, that we talked about and uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of theming the shows. Yes. And you might want to, you might want to just share with the viewers about how much of a oh. difference that made. Oh, yeah. 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 In fact, that's ladies that's and gentlemen. That's when the growth really started taking off. Yes. Yes, it does. And I got to say, ladies and gentlemen, Emerson Brantley had to explain it to me twice before I got it. <laughs> so, you know, when I share I wasn't going to say people, that, Jim. <laughs> yeah. But when I share that with people, uh, you know, people can understand, hey, Jim doesn't know it all. No, I don't, you know. But what we did, we shifted gears. We've actually had three different types of uh, uh, programming. We started out with just, you know, just guests in general, like popcorn on a hot stove. That is very, very hard to promote unless you have people on there like Les Brown and, you know, people of that caliber because you're all over the place. Then we went to theme weeks and we saw an increase in that. We would say on one theme per week. For example, like back when the, uh, the parents and the PTA, and the parents and the school boards were going at it, you know, like, uh, you know, <clears throat> at, each, at each other. We did a theme week on school, homeschooling, but we focused on the positive aspects of homeschooling. And then Emerson said, hey, Jim, you know, we need to do, you know, topics on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Friday, like you saw at the beginning of the show. That was what really made us take off. The reason, ladies and gentlemen, is because if I talk about expanding your business, I can promote expanding your business. And that's what people will tune into. The guest and me that put on the show, we just simply, you know, make a contribution to the show because people did not tune in to see me or the guest. They tuned in to see, you know, the, the content we're going to put out, just like America's Got Talent. You don't know who the guests are going to be, but you tune in because you want to see what the content they're going to provide. And it's got to be congruent with the show. And that's when our growth really took off we saw it, you know we saw it double in the first month Doesn't that's that a fact way. yeah and that's compliments of mr emerson brantley ladies and gentlemen like i say he explained to me twice because <laughs> <laughs> you know but that's okay at least i listened you got to be a good listener to be a host yes you do very a good. very good listener very good. and uh you you hit on something there that uh I'm not sure how to phrase it. I'll come back to that one. Uh, okay. Let's let's talk specifically about uh, now that you're in the big time. Uh, what? It, tell me about your whole podcast organization. I'd like people to see how it goes from one person with a phone mm. uh, interviewing themselves, usually to getting another mm. friend to interview with them, all the <laughs> way up to where you build a whole network like you have. Uh, I, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned some of the staff, but do you remember how you brought those people aboard and how you brought new equipment aboard oh, yeah. as the show grew? Could you oh, give yeah. us kind of a, a timeline of the Jim Grant show or the any of your other multiple shows? I, I don't know what <laughs> show name to use because yeah. you guys do so many on your network. Mm -hmm. Well, when we got started on E360 TV, uh, I uh, I knew some people already that we had a common thing. Donna Guinwa was one. And Donna and I, we became friends. We had we were like-minded and all that. And I said, hey, Donna, I'm going to be on E360 TV. And I says, I was wondering if you can, you know, host, co-host with me a little bit. She says, well, I can, you know, sure. And so she co-hosted on Thursdays at that time. And Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays is me and guests. And Fridays, uh, me and uh, another lady I knew, uh, she uh, co-hosted on Friday. And 
it just kind of grew from there. Remember what I said about following the energy? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's exactly what happened. Because uh, it's kind of like Bear Bryant one time was asked when he was coaching Alabama, how do you get all those great players, you know, that come out of your school? <laughs> and his answer was very, very simple. He says, I let everybody know at the beginning of the year, beginning of the season, that they're all on the same level. He says, I simply step back and let the cream rise to the top. And that's what we did here. And that's what you should do is follow the energy because people just migrated to the content. People migrated to the energy. And that's exactly how it happened. And, you know, Emerson, uh, I reached out to him because Emerson had a, uh, a, a an accident. B.I. And I just wanted to see how he was doing. And the energy just led us to him being on the show. And I really believe the show was good therapy for him. It certainly was a blessing for me. And it was a blessing for the audience. It was a blessing for our ratings. Would you agree with that, Emerson? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I look back over the last couple of years and, um, you know, having the dialogue and the conversation in fact, I just, I just yesterday met with uh, my neurosurgeon and, uh, <clears throat> and I was sharing with him some of this and he, he agreed. He said, you know, that's the best, ther the best therapy that you can get is actually having stimulating ideas and conversations where you're using mm -hmm. the parts of your brain. So, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. And see, that came about just because of a concern call from a friend to a friend to see how he was doing. And that's a classic example of what I've what I'm talking about is follow the energy. Let the the energy will attract the right content, the right people and all that. All you got to do is just be a good servant. And, uh, you know, I just it just, you know, it's just kind of like a farmer's field. The farmer works this field but he lets the field do the work to grow the crops. Mm -hmm. And you need to follow the energy and let the energy produce your great content. Just be true to your school and follow that energy. Believe in yourself, believe in others, and understand that your audience will be a true reflection of you and who you are as far as your morals, your values, your ethics, and just your personality. So relax and have fun. That's the main thing. If you're not out there sharing your great message and giving an opportunity for others to have a voice out there, ladies and gentlemen, you are cheating yourself out of the true riches of life. I was asked, if I may share this right quickly, I was asked after I had a heart attack and open heart surgery and four bypasses, I was 72 then, 74 now. And one of the questions came up is, Jim, uh, have you considered retiring and do what? Try to become the blue ribbon winner at the county fair for my tomatoes? That's not my calling in life. Plus, that's not up to me. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason. I was given heartbeat in my veins this morning, breath in my lungs. So therefore, it is my responsibility to do my duty and continue to march. And that's my attitude. People ask when I'm going to retire. So, well, the day before I die, if I get a chance, I'll call you. If not, I'll see you on the other side of the Jordan. <laughs> that's my attitude. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a great attitude to have, too. And I, I because my, in my publishing business, I work with people that are at the top of their game. Uh, I get to see that all the time that, uh, you know, you ask them, well, you know, you've got so much money now. Why do you keep working so hard? It's never the money. It's not for more money. Mm -hmm. It's because they love what they're doing and they mm -hmm. feel obligated to take the gifts God gave them and share them with other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when if if you're doing a podcast and you get to the point where you stop having that feeling, find a mm -hmm. different topic or quit one of the two. Yeah. You know, disingenuous podcasters are a blight on the country, <laughs> you know, especially now with. <laughs> with the artificial intelligence making it so easy to create massive oh. amounts of content. Of course, whether the content's correct or not, 
that's what you need <laughs> the experts for. I mean, it's uh, any one of us has all the information in the world at our fingertips now. Mm -hmm. What we need yeah. to know from the people you bring on is what should I be focusing on in my business? What are, what are the, you know, there's just a small slice of stuff that I really need to know. We'll, we'll take AI, for example. It's mm -hmm. just blowing up on marketing right now. It's the hot thing. And it's a world changer. I mean, I rank it right up there with the PC and mm -hmm. maybe electricity, certainly the printing press. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is going to change our world. Uh, but just because it is doesn't mean that me as a car mechanic need to know about AI. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I may want to listen to a guest that talks about how to automate my customer service using AI. Uh, that would be nice. But I don't need to know how AI works to use AI. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I, <laughs> I used to think I knew how cars ran. That was in the <laughs> 70s. <laughs> now yeah. I open the hood and it's like, what the heck? There's there's nothing there but a big cover. You know, where's the spark mm -hmm. plugs and the distributor and mm -hmm. all of this stuff? Uh, you know, it's, uh, but I bring a guy in that says, oh, you don't need to worry about any of that. I got this huge computer at the shop. We just plug your car in and the little people run around inside there and find everything that's wrong for you. So you don't have to know. And quite frankly, the the mechanics don't need to know how to find the problems anymore. It's come that mm -hmm. far. What they need to know is how to fix the problem. Right. There you go. And, and uh, that's that these people already know about their business. So I'm, yeah. I'm real excited about seeing uh, more. I, you know, it's a form of, uh, aggregating when people go through their industry like i follow the the publishing industry religiously mm -hmm. i read probably a minimum of one hour a day on industry related information uh but i do that so that you my author or emerson who's published several books uh you don't have to know all that stuff all you have to know is me and, mm -hmm. and I feel obligated to do that. If I, if I do something wrong, I go back to the customer sometimes months later and say, you know, I, I told you we should do this this way. And now with the extra information I've learned, uh, I'd like you to switch to this. Like, uh, I always thought that putting your picture on your first book was a little egotistical. <laughs> and, uh, and on Amazon, because we're looking at little uh, <clears throat> thumbnails, it's mm -hmm. not not the best for Amazon, but mm -hmm. if you're if you're a doctor like the one I was on with just before we came on, you want your picture in a white jacket, wearing a stethoscope, little clipboard in your hand, uh, mm -hmm. because you're not going to be selling your books on Amazon. The books that are going to be most powerful for you are the ones you give out locally, the ones where you mm -hmm. actually autograph them and hand them to a patient or you're at the Chamber of Commerce and you talk about your new book, you, you know, those those need your picture on it because you want the people to identify with who you are. And mm -hmm. uh, most of the people I work with, uh, this is going to sound blasphemous, but after the bestseller, they don't want to sell any more books on Amazon. They keep the books on Amazon because of the credibility and occasionally People come by and buy them, especially mm -hmm. people that heard them speak but didn't get a copy of their own. Uh, those kind of things uh, are great for the ego, but what's good for the business is when you hand it to somebody. And 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 I've seen it happen so often. Everybody's worried about the content. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, we're so conditioned when it comes to books that this is what typically happened when I was selling people things face to face. They'd look at the front cover of the book, flip it over, skim the back cover, and then they might thumb the book just to make sure it's got words inside it. <laughs> then, then, <laughs> then they set the book to the side. Well, at the time they set the book to the side, they've already decided whether they're going to do business with you or not. Right. I mean, That's that right. decision has already been made. Now, you need good, competent information in the book for when they go back later to read it mm -hmm. you know particularly if they've got a linear mind like an engineer <laughs> or whatever or an accountant where they're going to 
grammar check everything you know that's just their nature and that's wonderful you know i got other people like me that i just want to skim the bold stuff so i can get on you know a <laughs> little impatient when it comes to that so that's i think that that's uh one thing where we're still a little ahead of podcasts but i see podcasts and tv shows going there and that's oh, yeah. the credibility side people mm -hmm. just naturally assume you know i mean cnn sticks a microphone in somebody's face it's oh this is joe blow he's the author of blah 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 you know they don't tell you whether he ever sold two copies of blah 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 or whether it was published <laughs> 10 years ago uh all they're doing is telling you this guy had the knowledge took the time and the trouble to create a book uh he must he must know something about this subject and uh it, it happens all the time that's why we've you know it was a little embarrassing i went back to five or six different customers and said I think I led you wrong and I want to create a new cover for you mm -hmm. because I was, you know, I had found a better way to market. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm sure you get guests that want to talk about X and you look at their background and their information and everything. And you say, you know, yeah. my listeners would much rather you talk about why. It's more yes. current. You're an expert on it. And if you mm -hmm. wouldn't mind, that's what I'd like you to share with my audience, not your, you know, thing that you were selling five years ago or whatever. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Well, the best that brings up an interesting comment because I uh, I tell people I've, I've actually told potential guests on this. Our TV show is not a sales program. It really isn't. I said, to prove my point, when is the last time you picked up your remote and you went searching for sales pitches? <laughs> People want to, they want to have good information, good infotainment. And one other thing I'd like to say real quickly, if you're a host, I was asked this one time, Jim, how long did it take you to do a perfect show? And I've done <laughs> thousands of shows and I can tell you this, no, because I haven't done one yet. And I hope I never do, and I hope you never do either, because if you're focused on doing a perfect show, it, it's going to be, you're going to be so stiff. You're going to look like you're on the 6 p.m. news or something. Perfection is paralysis, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it is. So I hope that right. never, hope that never happens to you. Yeah, in the building business, we used to say that you, you'll never be able to build a perfect building till the original temple is rebuilt in Jerusalem. There I, you believe go. That's, I believe that's in the Bible somewhere, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't have that book memorized. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's just that simple. Uh, I, I see we're, we're already pushed past your normal timing for one of these, which is good because uh, just so people know, we're... The reason we did this is Jim has agreed to publish an Ideas Worth Knowing book on podcasting with me. And uh, as we create that book, which we do very quickly and fairly inexpensively, uh, he'll edit what he said today. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to go word for word with what he and Emerson said today. They're going to get copies of the manuscript once my professional writers pull this information together. And they're mm -hmm. going to go through with, I call it a red pencil, blue pencil thing. They're going to see things that they're like, nah, we, we really don't want to talk about this in the book. It's not the appropriate place for it. There's going to be other things where it's going to generate, you know, I remember a story now that would be a perfect mm -hmm. illustration of that. So they'll add oh, yeah. the story in and that mm -hmm. because, I mean, that's what people really like is they like stories they can identify with when it comes to mm -hmm. books. And yeah. uh, Jim, you've given us some great information, I think more than enough. And uh, I appreciate you letting me, you know, turn the table on you this one time. <laughs> yeah, I promise yeah. next time you can interview me. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. You're welcome anytime, my man. Well, well, I'm very we're... honored. I'm very honored that you wanted to interview me. I really am. And uh, it's truly a, a blessing. It really is. And it's just, I'm looking forward to the book myself, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I got a question for you. How, how do your listeners get on your email list so you can notify them when the book's ready for them? Oh, okay. 
Okay. They can reach us very easily. I normally put this up, but I haven't today. Our email uh, is uh, here at the TV station, inspiration at e360tv.com. It's one of our emails. And if you send that to this email, our staff will get it. And we will get the, uh, prop the appropriate information out to you, whatever your question is. And uh, that's, a, that's a good way. Inspiration at e360tv.com is this show's personal email address. All right. And for the, for the folks listening that actually had a little interest in book publishing, mm -hmm. we always, prior to publication, do what we refer to as an ARC, that's advanced reader copy, or uh, we also call them galleys, depending on mm -hmm. how long you've been in the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the first 200 people send you an email, saying that they're interested in an ARC copy, which will be, it'll be a digital version of Jim's printed book. But mm -hmm. if they email you and say they're interested in the book, I will give away the first 200 books at absolutely no cost to the people. Wow. All I ask from them is if you see any mess ups in there, guys, that's why we do advanced reader copies, let us know. <laughs> and the other thing is when Jim does get ready to launch it, going in and writing a review about the book, good, bad, or ugly. We don't care because mm -hmm. we know it's going to be good. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be a big help too because so many people say they'll do a review and then they never do it. Mm -hmm. So the first, uh, we can only do it for 200 people because there is a lot of mechanics going on in the background to make sure we mm -hmm. deliver you a good copy. And the other thing I, I want to announce, Jim, and this is maybe a surprise to you and Emerson, is every time someone gets a book in our Ideas Worth Knowing series, we're going to give them an Ideas Worth Knowing library card. And what that's oh. going to do is, as you know, because we're doing dozens of these books in all different genres right now, uh, as, as that grows, that library, they'll have access free because they got an Ideas Worth Knowing book from you. So that's mm. their bonus is they, they get the library card. And wow. I, I say library and people picture a room full of books, but this library will contain things like uh, any shows that Jim does that are topic specific to our audience might be in there like this show. Mm -hmm. uh, Emerson has helped create some of the best information products in the world and some great books. Mm -hmm. Some of those will be in there. And, uh, you know, a, a huge educational piece on artificial intelligence that mm -hmm. uh, Emerson and I are spending dozens of hours right now trying to pull that together uh, because we don't want to see people get bad information, particularly if it was shown that it was supposed to be good information. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm a zealot about right now. And uh, so I just want people to know that send your interest in right now to Jim. Uh, it takes you 30 seconds to do it. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in podcasting or even just being a guest on podcasts, Jim's information is going to help you a lot. I mean, he's mm -hmm. like he said, he's done thousands of shows and never done a perfect one yet. But what he, didn't, what he didn't say, though, is every time he screwed up, he learned from it. He just found oh, yeah. other, other more creative ways to screw up later. So, there you go. So please, folks, uh, we'd, we'd love to have Jim's readers as our uh, first readers of the book, simply because you guys really know Jim. You've got history with him and that. So I think you'd be the best one to get those free advanced reader copies. Mm. So Absolutely. If, if you would, would you give them your info one more time, uh, Jim, so that they make sure they send that just a, an email saying, I'd like a copy of Jim's book. That's all Absolutely. it has to say. Everything else, Jim's staff will take care of for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wanted to mention one other thing. You talked about sound. And uh, I've got a gang of unruly ducks right outside my window. <laughs> uh, they're they're really can can be obnoxious, uh, and mm -hmm. either they or the landscaping crew tend to show up at the exact quietest time of an interview I'm doing. I don't know how <laughs> they know that, but I know you and other experts in podcasting have 
uh, have systems that, and that's one of the AI things, I guess, is mm -hmm. you've got a system that'll help clean up videos. Mm -hmm. So yes. even if the people do a sto uh, do a show and they find out there is a lot of background noise when they when they go to look at it before they mm -hmm. post it, there's ways to fix that. So yeah, you know, and like Jim said, the the being a little blurry on the video because of bandwidth and other things that we become accustomed to that's not a problem but mm -hmm. we but we've heard good transmitted uh audio for 20 years and we expect the audio to be good oh yeah and uh that's people think it's the video and someday it will be you know mm -hmm. as the bandwidths get bigger and bigger it's just going to come to where instead of little glitches in the video being the rule they'll be the exception mm -hmm. and, and at that time you know people will adapt to it but mm -hmm. right now like like you said i i like good mm -hmm. sound i mean uh, yeah. and with good sound it, it helps us in so many other places that we didn't touch on yet for you folks uh, oh yeah like like how we do the transcripts, how we time mark the videos, uh, mm -hmm. all of those things you'll grow into. Mm -hmm. You know, if you listen to what Jim talked about today, you'll get your podcast started. Mm -hmm. And then every time you do a podcast, you'll get a little better at it. You'll mm -hmm. learn about these tools. Mm -hmm. But, you know, first do the podcast. Make sure you're going to be a good host. Make oh, yeah. sure it's going to be mm -hmm. fun. It's going to take you towards your goals. Because uh, yeah. if it's not, go write a book. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Book, yeah. Books are much more forgiving than <laughs> live interviews are. But, <laughs> and, uh, but I will say that people actually, when you screw up on an interview, people actually like that because mm -hmm. subconsciously it makes them realize that you're an everyman just like they are. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, that's... Uh, that the people walk away with a warm, fuzzy feeling because of that. Mm -hmm. and they don't even know what caused it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's watching two people that love the topic, try and share mm -hmm. it with them yeah. for a half hour, an hour. That's, that's a gift. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate yeah. you gifting me with this uh, show, Jim. <laughs> and, well, thank uh, you. It's certainly my honor to have you and uh, Emerson yeah. here. We're about out of time, ladies and gentlemen, also too. I talked about the overcoming the fear of public speaking. Glossophobia. Glosso is the Greek word meaning the tongue. I share a complimentary copy of my training on how I conquered the public speaking. If you email me at inspiration at e360tv.com, I'll be glad our staff will be more than happy to get that gift. AP. And on behalf of Emerson, and Mr. Mike Lewis, we want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure and visit Mike's website at ideasworthknowing.com. And also visit, visit Emerson's website at web3direct.com. And make sure of one thing. Make sure that you love yourself. Make sure you forgive yourself when you do things. And most importantly, have the heart of the family dog. Can you imagine what a wonderful world this world would be if everyone had the heart of the family? Dog. On behalf of Emerson and Mike, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.